All right, class. This is gonna be the VR pre-lab for your titration activity, which is from the last section of this chapter. Get two double periods to run this. Should only take you one double to run the data, run the experiment, and maybe like another singular period to do the calculations. Uh, materials for this setup are burette and burette stand, stir plate stir bar, and Erlenmeyer flask. We always titrate in Erlenmeyer because we will be stirring and we want to prevent splashing. Your acids and bases, essentially two labeled beakers um, with your acid in your base. Certainly one of them will be the titrant, one will be the analyte. In this laboratory we are going to titrate acid with base, therefore your base. Uh, will be the titrant, right? So <clears throat> first thing we're gonna do is kind of dole out some base into these beakers. Do not pipette directly out of the reagents. That is a no-no. So portion off what you need and then come back and grab more if necessary. So I'm gonna do that. First thing I'm gonna do is volumetrically pipette my analyte into the flask. And don't really need to do a basic lab technique on this one as you have done this earlier in the year. But certainly this is one of the steps that you need to be the most careful with as you could introduce error right away by not measuring to the meniscus and using the pipette incorrectly. One addition, technique is to actually hold the pipette on the side of the flask. <clears throat> I'm gonna do two additions of the 10 ml volumetric pipette. So again, you need stir plate, stir bar, burette, burette stand, acids bases, 10 ml volumetric pipette, and the indicator and obviously pipette bulb. This will be the second edition. Okay, we wanna get that meniscus directly on the line. That's 20 ml of the analyte. In this lab, you might share materials with the neighboring group. Could be the stir plate, could be the volumetric pipette, the bulbs, so we're just gonna share. If you're sharing, two people take a determination, then you switch while the other group takes a determination if they are indeed running the experiment on that day. All right, so the analyte's ready to go. There's 20 ml in there. Next thing I'm gonna do is fill my burette with my titrant, which I said in this case is going to be the sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is gonna go in here. Make sure your stopcock is closed. Okay. Now, the volume to which you fill this is unimportant. However, starting at zero, some uh, chemists just like to start at zero. Okay. Now, first step in filling this, in terms of technique, are going to be to get the air bubbles and the air out of the bottom of the burette. So I'm just gonna grab a waste beaker. You should also include that in your materials for this setup. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open this until we do not see air bubbles in the bottom. All right, so all the air bubbles are out. And then what I'll end up doing is you know, refilling this up to zero, but you don't necessarily need to do that. All you need is the initial volume. So now what I'm going to do is let a little bit more out so that my meniscus is directly on the line on zero. And that's gonna be my V zero or my starting volume.
Okay. Into the flask goes my stir bar. And a few drops of indicator. Say, pour some indicator out into your beaker. So do as I say, not as I do for this one. Two to three drops of indicator is typically sufficient. So for this titration, we know that phenothaline is clear in acids and it is pink in base. So we are going to be titrating this flask and this analyte to a permanent color of pink upon the addition of one drop. That maximizes the sensitivity of the instrument because the burette can only let one drop out, of the time, out at a time and we don't want to blow past the end point, otherwise it's just an incorrect determination. Now, I'm going to be giving you acids and bases that are essentially equal concentration. Therefore, you can expect your end point to be, in terms of the volume dispensed in the burette, to be close to the volume that you've dispensed in the analyte, which in this case is 20 ml. That means that you can essentially titrate quickly at first. You can let a lot of titrin out at the burette until let's say you get to you know, 15, 16, 17 ml, and then you should start to slow down. At the end of the titration, you should be adding it drop wise, right? If you go past, then again, you're titrating too quickly and you're gonna lose points on the percent error component of this lab, which uh, earns points. So the closer you can accurately determine the concentration of the analyte, again, better your grade's gonna be on this lab. So we got everything set up, 20 ml of analyte. Burette's filled to zero, there are no air bubbles. I have added the indicator. We're essentially ready to titrate. So like I said, I'm gonna expect my endpoint to be somewhere around 20 ml, but I'm going to again, Titrate quickly at first, slow down at the end. So, <clears throat> open my stopcock. Been letting quite a bit of titrin out, but 10 ml. Now, what you'll notice if I stop this for a second, turn the stir bar off. You'll notice some pink starting to build up in the flask, but then when I stir it, again, that base is neutralized right away because there's still excess acid in my flask. I'm trying to titrate to, again, the end point or the equivalence point in this titration, which is getting the solution to a pH of seven. And again, that is indicated by a pink color in your analyte withstanding for more than 30 seconds. So let's turn my stir plate back on, let some more titrin out, I'm now at 13. 14, 15. Notice the color is withstanding longer. Good habit to turn it off, check for your color. Okay. Still getting titrated away. Again, I know I'm getting closer to my end point as that pink color sticks around a little bit longer. I'm now rotating my stopcock a full rotation essentially, or a half rotation which lets out, you know, decent amount of titrant. All right, now I'm at 19. At this point in the titration, you want to adjust the stopcock so that you are titrating dropwise, which takes a little bit of practice. Okay. Now this is coming out dropwise. I'm gonna swirl this to get this basin analyte off the side. I have a white piece of paper underneath so that I can see the background. Here. And going back to dropwise additions. Be pretty observant at this point, okay? Trying to make sure that you don't go past the end point. It 
it's still clear. If you're getting the idea, you could fast forward to the end point if you're watching this on the VR. I'm going to keep adding dropwise so that I don't go past. I'm standing longer. Be getting close here. Okay, notice that pink color is withstanding a lot longer. Okay, we are essentially a, a drop or so away. So need to be very careful towards the end. I'm adjusting my stopcock to let out essentially one drop very slowly. Very close to the end point there. I'm gonna let out one more drop. Very close. Page is very close to seven at this point. And we're gonna wait for this pink color to withstand for about 30 seconds. Phenothaline changes very sharply at the end point. Essentially one more drop. Again, we're looking for a pink color that persists for essentially more than 30 seconds. And that's going to be our endpoint. That is maximizing the sensitivity of the instrument by the endpoint being reached by the addition of one singular drop. You come up to your burette, you estimate the final volume by incorporating your concept of the sig figs. So I see this as 21.5, and the meniscus is slightly below. So I'm going to call this 21.51 or 52. That would be the final volume of my burette. That titration is done. The pink color is still withstood. It's a faint pink, but it is definitely still there. And you are gonna run this experiment in triplicate, try and reach a low percent error. Um, that's all I got for you. Good luck on the lab.